Alright guys, thank you guys for joining me today. We are going to be in Psalm 13. So, let's check it out. It is a short one, but I think I've dug up some good stuff. I'm glad to be back for a second video in a row. Man, it had been so long there. That like three, four day stretch of not making anything new. Oh gosh guys, it was not good for me. So I am so glad to be back with you guys and ready to share with you some more, okay? So let's pray. Father God, I want to come before you today, Lord. I want to lift up your name. I want to proclaim your name, your way, your words, your love to this world, Lord. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Thank you for creating in me a new creation, for giving me a heart that is a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone and a heart that is hungry for you and, and not desiring things of this world, Lord. Help us to be bold, brave, dutiful Christians, Lord, victorious Christians, Lord, bold Christians, Lord. I ask that this video be able to reach its audience, Lord, to go out and to feed those of your flock that need that daily bread and to also proclaim you to those who are lost. In your heavenly name I pray, guys. He is so good. Let's read Psalm 13. This is titled, Trust in the Salvation of the Lord. And then subtitle on this is to the chief musician, a psalm of David. So, <clears throat> how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Amen, amen, amen. Let me second David on that one, on that last verse, because I too, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. His grace, so much more than sufficient for the moment, for the need, for the day. Thank you guys for letting me share with y'all. So it's a little bit, it's a short one today, but I think I got some good stuff for you. Um... <clears throat> Thank you for joining me for another psalm today. It's the 13th, again accredited to David as the psalmist. David's work here is a lament, and in it, it gives voice from an individual perspective. Now, it's a bit vague in that no real clear source of distress is defined. But see, this isn't a downside this is actually an upside this is a good use of what we could call less is more see this style allows for a, a abundance of applications because you can't read it and say well this is just about that and so in its vagueness lies its strength all right guys 13.1 how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Let's go ahead and include two in that. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? How long is the question here? How long? And it's repeated four times for, for, for enforcement sake it is a deep proclamation of suffering and of frustrations david really focuses on dark 
heavy feelings, and not only in regards to God, but also towards self and others. Sooner or later in our walk, our daily walk, we will all come to a point to where we feel like this in one way or another. And though not the same, this does recall for me Matthew. Um, let's look real quick at Matthew. I'll tell you which one in a second. Matthew, it's going to be in 27. Matthew 27, 46. <clears throat> and this is during the crucifixion of Christ. About the, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthini. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so to be clear, that's not the same type of thing, but it is the same type of expression. And, and, and that's what I wanted to share with you guys because we can all feel that way sometimes. So, that doesn't make you a bad Christian. It doesn't make you a weak Christian. It doesn't make you any of those things. 13, 3, and 4. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. So David had ran and he had fled from Saul countless times, guys. And as it would with anyone, this type of living was wearing heavily on David. To the point, it seems, he felt that he would sleep the sleep of death. He felt it all slipping away from him. And life can really beat us up. And during such difficulties, because they will come, being a Christian doesn't put you outside of difficulties. It just gives you a way to persevere through those difficulties. And it gives a purpose to those difficulties. They're for our refinement, for our purification, for, for our good. And so, like I said, life can really beat us up. And during such difficulties, we have to learn to speak up, to acknowledge what it is that we feel, what those emotions are, to give voice to them, not to hide them, but to proclaim them, and then, and then to lean fully into our heavenly almighty Father, allowing Him to be our source of hope, our source of strength, our anchor, our rock, our everything. That's how we handle those things. You proclaim them, you name them, you put them out there, and then you lean into God to get through it. That's how we do it, guys. All right, 13, 5, and 6, last one I'm going to share with you today. <clears throat> but I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. All right, guys, so I had wrote here, just as a side note, what this made me think was that honest remembrance is sure to build faith. If we can look back at our past and look at it with true, honest 2020 vision, it's going to be sure to build faith because God has always been there. He's always brought us through every time. And so, that's why I wrote, honest remembrance is sure to build faith. Our psalm climaxes as David recalls all that God has done for him. Looking back at 1 Samuel 17 and David's defeat of Goliath. Looking back to 1 Samuel 19 verses 9 and 10. And the fact that God, Father God, continued to preserve him from Saul's attacks and Saul's chases and Saul's opposition to him. See, what David learned is something that we should never forget as well. And that is, 
don't worry so much about the future. And if you do find yourself worrying about the future, the best way to solve it is by looking to the past. Look at what God has already done to get you here and know that he will do more because we're worth that to him. We were worth his son to him. We're worth a lot to him. And we have to find that worth in ourselves knowing that it comes from his valuing us. That's where our value comes from. Guys, if you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week. And I promise you, God wants us to do this, guys. Let's read it. Let's eat it. Let's sing it. Let's scream it, proclaim it, live it, do it. All right, guys? And let's do it together. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, man. Share it if you loved it. If you do, my heart goes out to you. Um, if you have any prayer requests, any comments, any funny jokes, as long as they're not dirty, drop them down here into the comment section, man. Let's build up a little network and fellowship for God and do it for God, man, because it's amazing. And I want us to all make it to heaven, guys. I love you. Father God loves you so much more. Man, go out there and have a blessed day, y'all.